Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. On this episode of Stamp School, we're gonna look at alcohol-based markers, and we're gonna color an image together today. I'm gonna share some tips and tricks, and I'm also gonna use a bunch of different markers because they all play really well together. Um, the reason I didn't start off with alcohol markers, we started off with water-based markers back in the beginning was because um, alcohol markers can be a little tricky to learn and they're also more expensive. So the first thing you want to do is stamp your image with a dye-based ink and I'm using Memento because um, the uh, alcohol markers are not going to bleed on the Memento ink. If I was to use Stazon it would bleed and feather because it's the same kind of ink so they would reconstitute each other. The angel I'm using here is from our sponsor, artneco.com, as are the other stamps we're going to use today. So I'll leave a link in the video descri description so you can go check them out. And I have it, I didn't even bother uh, mounting this on cushion, I just have the raw rubber because it's nice and deeply etched. You can see that I'm going to get a really good impression there. And I'm using a curved block because whenever I'm not using um, a cushion I like to use a curved block. And I am actually stamping on a piece of fun foam because if you don't have cushion on your block, you ought to have cushion on your table. So, you know, just think of that. If there's no foam on my stamp, if I've got a piece of foam on my table, it's going to help. And this is just, you know, inexpensive fun foam from the craft store. You can see that I have a really good image here. And you just want to let that dry before you begin coloring. So I've already uh, stamped and dried this one, and it's a little bit bigger, more like my example here. And we're going to start by choosing some colors. Now, I recommend that whenever you're going to start with alcohol markers, you have a scrap of the same type of paper you're using. And that way you can kind of color a few together and see how they blend so that you can choose um, colors that are going to play well together. Because as I said before, you can use different brands together. You don't have to buy like only Copics or only Spectrum Noir or only, you know, Bix. In fact, I recommend if you're just getting started to try and get like a package of um, the Bic markets and then which will be really dark colors and then pick up a few of the lighter shades of like Copics or Prismacolor or Pro Marker and see what you like best and buy different shades from different companies because you don't need to repeat you can you know get an idea of what you want. I'm going to start with this little um, kind of tunic that she's wearing and this is actually a very inexpensive marker this was in a 24 pack for about 20 bucks at AC Moore and I'm going to start with a fine tip here and I am going to color in all of my shading areas. This would be the areas that are like, you know, under the hair, towards the edge of the dress. And I'm going to give it um, this nice dark color, nice dark olive green. So, I mean, if you can like save a little money and get, um, you know, a variety of colors, and they usually be kind of dark if, you know, they're Sharpie or Bic or what have you. And then it kind of, just kind of, um, you know, build your collection up with some lighter colors. You'll get a you'll get a nice variety that you can use, and you know, get a few of the different brands and see what you like best. Just because you know a lot of people like Copics the best and they're the most expensive, it doesn't mean that they're going to be the best for you. So I put in that dark color, and then I'm going to go to this Copic marker, and this is pale olive. And I, the thing I do like about the Copics is I really like their nibs, and all the nibs are replaceable on the Copics, which are nice, and so you can refill them and you can't with all markers. Some markers are refillable and some aren't. So what I'm doing is I'm coloring over what I've already done. It's going to keep that ink wet and then it's going to help me blend at the line where they meet. And it does take a little work to get them to blend, especially if you're making a jump in between colors. Like all my uh, Spectrum Noir markers, I have quite a few of those and they're all upstairs um, in my winter office or, you know, my, the computer room kind of. Uh, because in the winter I spend most of my time working up there because it is so cold down here. All right, then I'm going to go into the medium, co the lighter color rather, and I have a Prismacolor avocado marker, and I'm actually going to use the uh, chisel tip on this one. It will help me blend it in, and I'm going over the previous color. And since that color is a little too minty, because see, I don't have, I probably, I have a lot of markers and I probably don't have as many as I should to do a lot of coloring. I'm going to go in with this jasmine color and I know I'm going to use this elsewhere in the piece so I'm not worried about adding in that extra color. And I'm using that to help me blend. Now, it's still a little bit of harsh around the dark area, but I'm, I can bring that dark out a little bit more because I did kind of keep it keep it real, really close to the edge. So I'm going to bring in a little bit more of that first color. And since the paper is really wet, it's going to really blend a lot easier when I go in with this next color. I think I will go in the chisel end of my Copic because I find that I can really control it a lot better or I guess force it to blend a lot better with the chisel end. 
So the other thing you'll notice about alcohol markers is that generally if you want to do the blends, it's going to take you quite a bit longer. Oops, I just got some into that heart, but that's all right. I'll show you how to erase a color in a minute. And then I can go back in either with my yellow or my green to just blend in that center. And we have to let that dry before I can show you the erasing trick, but that's all right. So there we have a fairly blended uh, center here. And I don't use, um, oh, I got, I got some ink on the back by mistake. Um, I don't use my uh, alcohol markers as much as a lot of other YouTubers. So, you know, I'm definitely not the, you know, first person to look to for a alcohol marker coloring tutorial, but I do it once in a while. I find them very, color, very uh, relaxing to use. And then they are a lot of fun. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna go to another part. I am going to go to the wings and I am gonna use um, a couple shades of gold here. So I've got this uh, Pale Sepia from Copic. I've also got this Light Umber from Prismacolor. And most of these markers, actually all the ones I'm using today are double-ended, but if you were to get like a Bicker Sharpie, they would be single-ended. So I'm gonna go in and put my shadow colors in first right here at the bottom. I like to go dark to light. Some people um, will do everything light and then they'll work, they'll like color the whole thing with the lightest color and then they'll go in and go darker and layer and then go back over and blend with the lightest one. I guess it depends kind of on the paper you have too. If you're having a hard time with your paper getting it to blend, you might like to prime the uh, area with your uh, lightest color first and then go in and color just like I did um, over it again. But I find that the uh, Nina cardstock works really well for this. But you can always go in and add more. That's the cool thing about it. And if I want to force a little more blend, I can go in with that lighter color all the way down to the bottom and kind of make it move a little bit more. And if you're going to cut your image out, you can actually be pretty sloppy about it. You don't have to be so careful, but I am going to do some coloring in the background. So there we have our wings. Now for the skin tone, I'm going to use um, a couple different shades here. I've got this Mocha Light, and that's going to go around the hairline and edges. Also on the edges of the hands. This looks kind of like a like a patchwork sewn doll, so I want to get that um, get that look in there. I think I'm going to do this the feet in that color in this one. I did it red in the other one. Feel free to make your screen full size if you're having a hard time seeing the detail here. And then I'm going to go in with this um, brick beige, another Copic. I do like the neutral tones in Copics a lot. I mean they're fantastic markers, but they're like between five and eight bucks a pop depending on where you buy them. So, you know, it's not in everybody's budget. And since you need a lot more markers when you're doing alcohol coloring to get the same, you know, to get a good result, it's it's a consideration. Now, Spectrum Noir is probably the best bang for your buck, but um, there are a couple issues with the markers. The old style, they dried out, and the new style, the caps are kind of hard to get on and off. They're fine if you're, you know, you know, for the average person, I think, but if you are, you know, you know, have any arthritis or anything like that, I think you're going to have a hard time with it. Um, okay, now I'm going to, well, we got the skin done, and that was pretty easy. Neutrals blend really easy. Hardest one to blend is like reds and purples. Um, so now for the hair, what I'm going to do is go in with this light umber, and I'm going to color in the, kind of near the face, the shadow areas, and I'm also going to go over those little uh, pen marks from the stamp. I always try to follow the, uh, the designs from the stamp whenever I can, the lines, if there's any like stippling or anything like that, I try to follow that so I get that, um, I get that kind of easy shading. All right, and then I'm going to go in with this golden color. I think I'm going to go in with a chisel end because I want to make sure I can force it to blend. Oh, it's blending pretty well. But the cardstock really helps. A Georgia Pacific is actually decent for blending, and that's the stuff you get at like Walmart or Sam's Club. The thing you need to watch with that is just to be careful when you um, when you're getting near the edge, they will it will tend to feather. So you want to color slightly inside the lines because the the ink is going to kind of push outward a little bit. So you need to account for that. But I mean that that's what I started with, and that was fine. I mean I really don't think you see the benefit 
of a nicer cardstock until you've really got some under your belt, you know, got some coloring under your belt. So for the reds, oh, I want to show you how I'm going to erase that uh, mistake there. I have a clear marker. That's probably like if you went and got the Bix or Sharpie set and then you wanted to start building your stash of, um, of you know, the more of the art marker, I would recommend starting with a... Um, with a clear blending marker and I'm going to use a chisel edge here so if you want to use it as an eraser grab the chisel edge and then you're gonna let me zoom in I really want you to be able to see that good okay and try to keep my hand out of the way so what I'm doing is see that where I have that green and it shouldn't be there I'm gonna color right over that and what it, what's happening here is it's pushing the ink to the outside okay so just push that and it erased my mistake and then I'm going to color it red afterwards and it will be, you know, it'll be fine. Okay. So now I've got three different shades of red that I'm going to use. I'm not going to go right to that part yet because it's still wet and then it's going to feather and it's going to bleed into my green and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. I think I just got to double check on my swatch here, which was my darkest red. I think it was the Tria. I really like the Tria markers. I'm not sure if they're still making those. Those are by Letraset. So reds are hard to blend, so I'm not going to skip around very much when I do this. I'm going to go right in with my dark here. I'm going to do the leggings here. Then I'm going to go right to my second one. I'm coloring over what I've done and I'm dragging it down. Very important to make sure when you're working with red or purple that you keep it, you keep it moving. Then I'm going to go in with this lighter red. The Pro Markers are really nice. They're probably they're another good buy. They're, um, I haven't had any problem with getting them dry, like when I get a new marker, having it dry. And I think they're under $3 regular price. So, you know, you can shop around online. You can get them for like $1.50. And so then we've got a nice black from dark to light. Red doesn't show up good on camera. So hopefully you can see that. But if I feel like I want a little bit more shadow, I can go back in here with this darker and I can repeat those colors so I mean you can adjust the thing is like every time you go down go with another color right next to it it's going to reliquify that ink and keep it blending and since it's not paper it's not a water based it doesn't want to shred your paper and make it pill like um your watercolors well or your watercolor markers so that's another reason that it's kind of fun now I think I'm also going to use that up here on the um, on the arm. So again, I'm going to go in with my dark. Oops, I want the... Uh... Oh, the cool thing about the tree is, is that you get a chisel edge marker. You've got a fine tip marker that's actually on top of the chisel edge, and then you get a brush tip, and I really like their brush tip markers, but they're from the UK. I'm not sure. They're the same company that makes Pro Marker. It's the same ink as in a Pro Marker, except these are refillable, and um, you know, you can replace the nibs, and they're just fantastic, but I don't think they ever really took off, kind of like the Copics did. I actually think the trees are a better marker. I grabbed a bunch um, on clearance, I think from Jerry's Artorama a while ago. They were like $1.99 on clearance. They're a nice marker. I imagine it's probably one of those things where they're very expensive to produce, and maybe that's why they're not as popular, or they're not, they might not even be made anymore. I'm not sure. So here I'm actually going to color over the whole thing, and then I'm going to use my lightest color as a highlight because remember how we erased and it pushed that ink out of the way? That's kind of how the highlights work if you want to use it as a highlighter. So if I go in with this lighter color, it's going to kind of push away some of the other pigment and push it to the outside where the shadow is. So it's just another neat little trick to know. I think I do need a little more shadow in there though, so I'm going to go back to the Tria and add it under the face and kind of where the arm is behind the first arm. Whoops, there we go. And I can blend that in a little bit more if I think it needs it. I think it's probably all right. Maybe just a little blending with this medium color. So I'm, and I'm really coloring fast, guys. Um, it does take you longer to color with these types of markers. Now for the heart here, I'm gonna do the same thing. You don't really have that much room to blend here. I'm just going to get the uh, outline with the darkest color, medium color, and I don't really have room for the lighter one, so I think I'm just going to leave it like that. 
and the halo I will do in this nice beautiful gold and there's also the chameleon pens which I did a review on a couple months ago um, they so instead of having all these colors you just have one marker for each main color and then you would use the blending chamber to get the lighter shades which is a really cool idea um, and you know I think if you're just starting you know that's 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 a hundred dollars you know you can easily spend that on a few markers it's you know it's just a different it's a different way to color and you know you might really like it all right so for the trim I'm trying to see what I how I did it on this one this one I used I did the trims yellow so I think I'll go ahead and do that again the same color as the wings so I'm gonna use jasmine and I'm gonna use gold I'm just gonna start with my darker color which is this gold and since neutrals blend pretty well I'll just do both of these parts at the same time I'm doing my dark at the uh, flat part of the lace and the light at the puffy part of the lace you know just because I feel like it I mean I would think also that like the uh, the flat parts kind of where it's sewn down and that's where you would see more shadow you could go in with a little more brown or something if you wanted a little bit darker but I think I want to keep it a little bit lighter and oh the little stars I think I'll do those with gold as well this uh what is this called pale sepia or sepia depending on what you prefer okay now we're going to do some back uh, the background and I will tell you the backgrounds are hard to do with um, with these markers because you know it's it's hard to work a large open space and keep it blended so because of that and this because this is kind of a beginner tutorial we're actually going to work with that and I don't think I actually used that dark blue did I? I don't think so um, I'm going to work with that aspect and we are going to do a modeled background so we're going to be using two very light shades of blue in our clear blender and I'm going to start by taking the darker of my two blues which I believe is this one and I am going to color around my person here my little flying angel it's really not that light of a color well this is B01 this is probably way 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 sharp, probably like 10 shades lighter than what your latest sharpie or Bic market would be so that's that's what I say you know spend your money on the really light shades get a big pack of markets you know learn how to color with those I mean because once if you can blend those puppies you're not going to have any trouble blending the expensive ones and also another thing I like to do is I'll take like a tile and I will I mean I have a video on that I'll try to remember to link that up it was a cyclamen a picture of a cyclamen that I drew and um, what I did was I took a just a you know a glazed tile from the hardware store you could use a plate or whatever and I um, I scribbled my markers on that and then I used the clear blender to pick it up so I could have like this palette of colors still get the get the alcohol marker look and um, honestly have like 10 colors and that would be all you need so kind of like the same idea as the chameleon pens but um, but I was kind of painting them on like a palette or you could use your alcohol inks guys remember how I showed you that palette um, last weekend I did the alcohol ink coasters it's the same idea you could squeeze out some alcohol ink into a palette and use a uh, blender pen to uh, to work it around oh, okay that's another thing I want to mention these blenders are not the same as the blenders that we've been using these have these blenders contain alcohol they do not contain water and glycerin so that's the other thing if you try to use your Stampin' Up your Tombow blender um, or your water brush it's not gonna cut it it's not gonna work it doesn't have the right juice in it so I also want to let you know that so you don't go out and buy a bunch of alcohol based markers and then wonder why your blender pen is not working so here I'm just kinda dabbing the tips on these Copics are super easy and, and, and uh, nice to work with but I'm, I'm going for a modeled look here and you'll see I'll show you here plus we're gonna do some stamping on top to give it those snowflakes so really nothing to worry about I just set that on top of an ink pad somebody's gonna get that card this Christmas be like what the heck was Lindsay doing I'm gonna big square on the back of my card maybe they don't look at the back I don't know look at the back see how much I paid for it it's handmade Nobody's looking at the back of my cards. I think this uh, and this marker. Look at this. It's lighter colors seem to. I don't know if they go dry quicker or they just feel dry quicker. But this one um, probably could use to be reinked because you can see how I don't have a very 
very smooth application. So you can buy a bottle of reinker for about $8 for a Copic, and I think it'll um, reink these about six times. So, you know, you can see how it can, the more you use it, the more economical it becomes. I'm just tapping because I just want to give this modeled look in the background. It's not going to be super noticeable on this light color, but if you're doing this like dragon scales, like if you had the bright green dragon and you were tapping on it with your clear blender, you'd definitely get the dragon scale look and it would be totally cool. Okay, so there we have that colored. Now I want to do a little inking on the edge, so I'm going to get a scrap of paper over here. I can do that so I don't get it all over, because if I get the ink on my table, I don't care about getting the ink on my table, but it's going to get onto my cardstock. And you know how I hate to have ink on my cardstock where it doesn't belong. Um, I just had this little piece of foam here, which actually I like my homemade daubers better, but I had this out, so I'm just going to use that. Oh, that's not even the right color I was going to use, but now I've already put it down there, so I'm going to at least start with this color. <laughs> I'm a mess. A mess today, guys. You know what? I'm switching to my color duster. I just want to get a little something on the corner. You know what? I'm switching back. I don't like that. I'm using the color duster on my doily, not on that. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the flow. Go with the flow, guys. So yeah, take your time. I take my time, I get a nice, a nice even blend. Thing is, I used uh, Wild Honey on this and I grabbed tea dye by mistake for this, what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna go over that with the Wild Honey and the world's gonna keep on spinning. Cause you know what? It's not like the person that gets this card is gonna be holding it next to the other card cause they're not even gonna know that card exists. Unless they watch this video, then they're like, oh, I got the crappy card. I wanted the good one. Count yourself lucky you got a card. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> no, I won't be able to send out either of these cards because everyone's going to know. <laughs> okay, so we got a little, uh, little kind of vintage distressing on the edges. And now I'm going to take my... Um, my tumbled glass ink, which is just like kind of like a light aqua. I'm zoom out a little bit. I'm feeling a little cramped. Um, and I am going to use some snowflakes. These are also by Art Neko. I believe they're on the same plate. At the the uh, there's a whole set of stamps. It's just some gorgeous vintage. Well, they're they're pre they're more primitive, I guess, than vintage. They do have a lot. She has um, quite a few different options out there for Christmas stamps, but. I like this set. It's very primitive. There's a lot of it's really great for coloring if you like to do either the watercolor um, cards or you like to do the alcohol markers. See, don't do that. Don't stamp the same thing right next to each other. Try to keep it a little bit a little more random. Oh, I can't talk in color at the same time. I think that's why the coloring book craze is so popular because it, it forces people to relax and just chill out and color. I got my girls some of those fancy coloring books for their birthday. The uh, the ones with like the more sophisticated designs. They love those things. So great, you know. And they they always love to color, but you know they've kind of outgrown the the coloring books that you know are sold for children. And I always have to print them off, you know, coloring pages. So they'll go and stamp some house mouse to color. And uh, that was just it's just nice that they have that option now. And it's nice that adults are coloring. If you want to use your alcohol markers in one of those um, coloring books, I recommend putting like a piece of cardstock in between the pages so it doesn't leak through to the page afterwards. I think that would totally happen in those books. All right, this is gonna be a long video, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we have that all stamped in there. I like the look of those extra little stamps. And we didn't have to mask because, you know, we're using a clear block so we can kind of see around. Again, I didn't even, I don't have these on a curved block, um, but they're deeply etched enough that, you know, they stamp fine. You don't, I didn't have to put um, cushion on them. So that saves me a lot of storage space and saves me some money too. All right, so I really like this pen. This is the Jelly Roll um, point .5. I'm going to show you the package. Somebody said they, they bought it and it, they didn't get the same thing that I have. This is the Jelly Roll Stardust and clear glittering gel ink that's what it says uh 0.5 millimeter is the tip size bold line so i just wanted to make sure i showed that package because someone had said they tried to order it they got something different or the ink didn't flow quite properly um i got mine from a stamp show i believe it was the, the tesla stamp booth at the heirloom show but i mean it's, it's a pretty common thing i think you'd be able to get it pretty much anywhere and i'm just going to go around and i am going to add little bits of glitter 
I like to go over the stamped lines, actually. I think that looks kind of cool. But, you know, you could just add it to the stars and the halo if you want. Completely up to you. I think it's pretty when you kind of uh, accentuate some of those lines. Do you guys want to watch me put the whole card together, or are you bored out of your gourd? I don't know. I guess I probably will put the card together with you guys because it is stamp school, and I probably every little bit helps. You know, when you see a whole project, you know, you see everything put together. I'm hearing crazy noises outside. I don't know if you can hear them or not. I just heard uh, sirens go by, which is kind of, kind of strange. We often don't hear sirens up in Smallville. I like to do the little, uh, you can see the little stitches. I love the detail on the stamp. It's a lot of open area, which is good for coloring. So if you have a lot of stamps that are like this, you might enjoy alcohol markers. If you find that you don't like stamps that have a lot of open area, you like more solid uh, area stamps, you may not like it. And it's just that the alcohol markers are such an investment that um, you want to kind of know how you stamp before you jump in and you buy a ton of these. That's the other reason I didn't want to put it in in the first Stamp School episodes because I didn't want you to be like, oh, well, I got to have these because Lindsay said so. And then you realize that you don't even like the types of stamps that you use these with. Um, the other cool thing about this is that you could like print off coloring sheets from the internet or digital stamps and even with your inkjet printer ink you can color them with the alcohol markers and they're not going to smear so that's another um another option so it can save you money that way too because you can use you know stuff you print off your computer but you know it's uh you have to kind of decide if it's something you're going to really use. Uh, one great tip would be to borrow a set if you have friends that um, that stamp and have alcohol markers. If you can borrow some to try, that would be a great thing to do. I am. Oh, I want my scrap paper for a little bit. I want to add some ink to one of these doilies. It's just a six inch paper doily. I'm going to use my color duster because I think that a sponge would shred those uh, that doily. I just want to make it look a little bit more like the colors I'm using in my stamped thing. You know, so yeah, if you've got a if you've got a friend that has the markers that would let you borrow them, I would definitely try them out before you buy them because you might not you might not really like them that much. And you can really get a lot more watercolor money markers for your money. So something to consider there. They uh Pro Marker used to have these great blending sets and they were sets of 12 markers and they had pastel muted or vivid and like if you got the pastel set and the muted set and then a set of um Sharpies or Bix it was such a great a great um you know variety of supplies but I don't think they sell that anymore. I wish they still did because cuz I really I really thought it was a a great deal for beginners especially. All right, so now I'm going to I just have a 6 by 6 card here. So what I used was Double Mates cardstock. It's lighter on one side, darker on the other, so I have the lighter on the inside so you can actually see if you were going to write, you know? I like to I like to see what we write in a card, don't we? All right, and I'm gonna put that down right on top. Hope this wasn't too long of a video. I know that always worries me. It's like everyone wants everything wrapped up in three minutes and it's like, oh, I don't know, I can't. Uh, not for beginners, maybe somebody that's really familiar with using those. All right, and then we're gonna put our focal image, which, where'd I set my thing? I've just spent 20 minutes coloring. Oh, good grief. Well, while I'm looking for that, I'm gonna cut a piece of ribbon. I've had this ribbon in my stash for like, I bought it from a scrapbooking store when they were going out of business because I really liked it. And um, it's like lasted forever. <laughs> I still got, I've used it like on every, every Christmas. Some cards end up with this ribbon on it. It's funny. Make sure I have enough. I can always trim off a little bit extra. And I'm sure that that painstakingly color, colored image is going to just magically appear any second now. Put that down here. All right, and then see, I like to leave it, I'll have it a little bit longer so then I can flip it over and I can trim the excess off on the back. There, you get a bonus long video today. Isn't that great? All right, now seriously, there it is. There's our little image there. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and stick that down. not going to second guess it. So you can see that also alcohol markers bleed through. The only marker paper I've used that doesn't bleed through is Gina K. I think it's like called Pure Luxury or it's a super thick, heavyweight. It's almost like card cardboard. It's so thick. Um, it doesn't bleed through in that, but all other markers, 
all of our other cardstocks, even the thick, thick ones, still bleed through the back. So you'll want to make sure that you're doing this on something you can layer on top of another card. All right, I'm going to use some buttons. Um, I'm just going to grab a couple. I want kind of like this, the uh, kind of, oh, that's kind of neat. It's a snap. I don't know if I want that or not. I'm just going to decorate it with a few little buttons. I love buttons. I have quite a stash. That way you don't have to feel badly about using them up because I so I always I always make sure I have plenty of buttons on hand. And then maybe a couple vintage white ones. These are all from my um my sister-in-law before she passed away. She gave me these. She always collected white buttons and she gave me a big jar of them and I don't think it's I, I don't want to just hoard things and and not use them. So so they get used. And oftentimes I'll send the cards to her their her daughters because they'll, they'll rec they recognize the buttons. They know how, how she loved her white buttons. All right, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Groups of threes always look kind of nice. And um, if you want to add just a special touch, I don't do this to everything because it's a little time consuming, but what I'll do to like my, maybe the biggest, darkest button is I'll add um, some twine through it. And I go right off the spool. See, it's hooked. This is just some hemp, and I like this because I don't have to thread it in a needle. It holds uh, quite a bit of stiffness. So I'm just going to weave it through these through a couple buttonholes here. Actually, you can't even tell. I can't remember what I did that, that I was like, oh, I messed up this card. I can't even remember now because the card looks so darn cute. So, say, look at that. No one's ever going to know if you make a mistake on a card. Even if I hold these two finished ones next to each other, I don't think you'd be able to tell what ones had. Well, they probably both have mistakes on them, but you probably wouldn't be able to tell any glaring errors anyway. I'm using this. Um, this is Beacon 3-in-1. I like it quite a bit. Uh, I got it on clearance or sale. Uh, no, it was at Ocean State Job Lot for two fifty. I don't know if you call that clearance or just kind of like a special buy. I guess they get some weird things in there. It uh, dries pretty quickly. It is kind of stringy. It's kind of like hot glue, but you won't burn your hands off when you use it, which is nice. I had to cut the shank off the back of that button. I just used a pair of wire cutters for that. If you ever have a button like that with the shanks on the back and you can't glue it to your card. Just uh, use a little pair of wire cutters. Works like a charm, dear. Got this all over my fingers. Trying not to get it. You know what? I think I'll stick that. I'll put that little dab on the card itself. Oh no, it's stuck to my finger. Ah, there we go. And this is a square card. It's also a bumpy card, so it's going to require extra postage. So keep that in mind. You're going to need an extra 12 cents at least to mail this baby. So if you're doing a square card or a very lumpy one, you may want to hand deliver it or just, you know, throw an extra postage stamp on there. Buy some pretty ones. I always go in and buy them. Go into the postmaster and I and I look at the pretty ones. So there is our finished card. And I'll show you the first one, which I think I think they look equally charming. Actually, I think I like that darker ink on the outside of that one, the one that where I thought it was a mistake. Um, use what you have. Doilies are a very inexpensive way to embellish a card. If you like these stamps, you can find them at artneco.com, our sponsor. Please thank them for sponsoring Stamp School. They are really one of the main reasons that these videos are coming to you free every week. Um, I do appreciate their support. They've been a longtime friend of the Frugal Crafter, so make sure you say howdy. And oh, don't forget to mention the Frugal Crafter so you can save 10% off your order or get free shipping if your order's over 50 dollars whichever discount is greater is the one you'll get um, so that pretty much does it if you have any questions leave them in the comments below thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting